Oswell Media Sports. We welcome you to Kosciuszko Whippets Baseball from Boswell Media Sports. This is Breck Riley here on the Premier Medical Pregame Show. We have Donald back at the studio in Kosciuszko. We are on the road, uh, just one county over, not too far away. The game number two between the Kosciuszko Whippets and the Louisville Wildcats. Uh, I think we're on track for maybe a little bit after a 7 o'clock uh, first pitch as they let the JV game go on well past 6.30. So they had to wrap the JV game up and then get the field ready. So uh, both teams are, are kind of still taking some warm-ups down the the, the baselines, so we're not exactly sure on start time. We're just going to have to play that one by ear. But what we can tell you is that the Kosciuszko won game one, 9-6. to six. On Tuesday night, the Whippets got four innings of work from Braxton Smith. He was our Autumn Ridge Dental player of the game. He went four innings, gave up three hits, walked two, struck out six, and gave up four runs. Then he had Aiden Howard come on in relief, two and two-thirds. He gave up two hits. Uh, five strikeouts, two runs, and then Cooper Stevens came in for a third of an inning to close things out. He walked one and struck out one. So that's what it looked like on Tuesday. And so we have the return game there flip-flopped. If you're looking at the schedule, it might say, hey, you're supposed to be at home tonight. Well, we indeed were supposed to be at home. Coach McBride told us that uh, yesterday in the uh, in the Surf Pro Coaches Show, or like today in the Surf Pro Coaches Show this morning on Breezy 101, uh, he mentioned that on Tuesday the field here wasn't ready because all that rain that happened on Monday, and uh, Louisville couldn't play on Wednesday, so they decided to just flip flop. So uh, Tuesday we played at Kosciuszko, and now we're over here on the uh, on the road at. Louisville. If you're not familiar with the uh, setup, we are not too far away from R.E. Hines Stadium. You know where the football field is. Well, uh, if you're coming to Louisville, you take a right uh, to get to that football field. You take a left, and you come over here to the baseball field. So not too far away, right across the street from uh, from the school. But we do have the starting lineups for both teams, and those are brought to you by Holmes Community College. We'll start first with your Kosciuszko Whippets brought up there on the screen. If you're watching the Allen's Furniture video stream, which we have for you at the moment. Signal and internet over here is kind of coming and going. So for now, you can go watch it on your, your uh, device, your TV, your a Apple uh, iPad or Android, anything with the YouTube app, you can watch it. But the starting lineups for the Whippets, you'll have Braxton Smith, the sophomore batting first, playing first base. And then you got John Wyatt Rusco. He'll be in left field batting second, Benny Powell. The Whippets junior center fielder will bat third. And then it's Aiden Howard, the sophomore. He'll play third, bat fourth, Barrett Kewen. He'll be behind the plate. The junior will bat uh, fifth. Then it's Ryan Tillman, the junior shortstop, batting sixth. Bailey Power is going to be on the bump tonight for the Whippets. He'll bat seventh. It's Holden McGee, the sophomore, playing second base. And then the, the lone senior in the lineup is Andrew Mansell. Uh, he will uh, play left field. 
and bat ninth. So it's Smith, Rusko, Powell, Howard, Hewen, Tillman, Powers, McGee, and Mansell. As we mentioned, those starting lineups are brought to you by Holmes Community College. Looking at the lineup for the Louisville Wildcats, not too much uh, different from what we saw on Tuesday, just uh, you know, flipping some guys around and then some uh, different positions. Caden uh, White, the center fielder, he will bat first, and that uh, will be Josh Ammons batting second. Those two flip-flops from Tuesday. Josh Ammons is a shortstop. Mitchell Turner, who started on the mound on Tuesday, he'll bat third, play first base. Uh, Cedric Hunt, the one they call Sugarfoot, he'll be behind the plate catching, batting fourth. It's Wyatt Long who will be pitching. He was at second base in the game on Tuesday. Caden Tompkins will bat uh, sixth, play third base. Caleb Ball did not get in the game on Tuesday, but he comes in to play second when Wyatt Long is going to be on the mound. He'll bat seventh. Then you got Xavier Hunt batting eighth and playing left field. It's Caleb White uh, batting ninth and playing right field. So it goes Caden White, Josh Ammons, Mitchell Turner, Cedric Hunt, uh, Long, Tompkins, Ball, Xavier Hunt, and then Caleb White. Uh, the Louisville Wildcats are coached by Brad Mitchell, and we have to say a big thank you to assistant coach Newly Long. He was the one that well, we talked to and uh, got us set up where we uh, are. What uh, looks like a, a, a break room where I'm sitting. It's uh, a break room up here in the, the coach's office, and so I got a a TV right here. I got a microwave. I got a refrigerator. I got <laughs> what? What? What else could you want? I got salt and pepper shakers, some Chick Fil A sauce. I mean, we're good to go here uh, for the, a great night of baseball. Uh, but yeah, big thank you to Coach Newly Long for uh, pointing us uh, where we are supposed to be. I talked to him earlier today. Uh, the pre medical pregame show rolls on as we'll give you our field conditions and weather report. Field. Uh, looks good. Uh, no rain since Monday, so the turf and the, um, the the grass and everything, dirt had a chance to dry out. You don't have to worry about all of uh, all of that. And at, right now it's 60 degrees as we get ready uh, for first pitch. Uh, looks like the temperatures can drop maybe by about five to seven degrees by the end of the night, and there's virtually no wind. It says three miles an hour coming out of the north. But I'm looking at the American flag out there in center field, and it is not moving at all. So that's your field conditions and weather report brought to you by the Atala County Co-op. Wildcats are going with their all-white uniforms. They have white tops, white pants, and what I believe, I believe their color is cardinal. It looks maroon, but I think they call it cardinal over here in Winston County. They got the cardinal numerals and wildcats uh, written in uh, cardinal across the chest. The Whippets have gone into the dugout. <laughs> They're going with the black tops, gray bottoms. They have uh, Kosciuszko written in maroon across the the chest in the block maroon numeral. So that's well, some gray pants, a little bit of a different look for the Kosciuszko Whippets. But we are, as I said, doesn't look like we are going to be on time for that 7 o'clock first pitch. So we're just going to have to uh, wait and see how they do things uh, here at the uh, ball park. Give you a look around what's going on with uh, other Whippets sports. You got the Lady Whippets softball. They're playing right there at Peggy Abel's Field right now, taking on Germantown. And at last look, that game is scoreless in the second inning. So that was a close game right there. The Lady Whippets got a couple of big wins earlier this week against Greenwood to remain undefeated in region play. And so Coach Wade Moore and the Lady Whippets going out of district uh, tonight to take on a 7A, 7A, yeah, German A, a Germantown team from out of the Jackson metro area. Also, tonight you had uh, tennis, or I should say tonight, this afternoon, you had tennis uh, going on the road to take on East Webster. So for the second, second time this week, tennis team traveling up to uh, – Webster County. Earlier this week, they got a close win over Eupora, and right now they are uh, taking on East Webster. We hope to give you updates on 
all of those, both of those games, uh, the, the softball, we can follow along softball. We'll have to do some searching to find the updates for the uh, the tennis uh, game that may be, tennis match that may be going on. If you have my uh, Twitter or phone number and you have an update, feel free to tag me in a in a post that has a score or shoot me a text message. The Louisville Wildcats come into tonight's game. They are uh, five and six on the season. The Kosciuszko Whippets come in at nine and six. The Wildcats are one and three in division play. They dropped two games. Uh, to Caledonia, and then the one game earlier this week to Kosciuszko, the lone win they have is over the Greenwood Bulldogs. And they just have the one win because uh, that game two of that series uh, was rained out. So I would assume they'll probably make that one up at some point. Kosciuszko undefeated in region play. They uh, 3-0. and They got the two wins against Houston you know, earlier this month where they had the game that was suspended due to rain, and then uh, game the rest of that game and then game two was played down at uh, Holmes Community College. Whippets got a win in both of those. So that's big uh, for the Whippets as uh, uh, the top four teams in the division uh, make the playoffs. And there's only five teams in the division. So if you're able to get a win here today, pretty much guarantees a spot in the uh, in the postseason for you. Uh, barring anything crazy happening. So uh, big, a big game tonight for the Whippets, and uh, they'll have to uh, deal with what I understand is a pretty good pitcher in Wyatt Long. Uh, he didn't pitch earlier this week. It was Mitchell Turner. And uh, talking to Coach McBride uh, off the air, you know, at the during the Surf Pro Coaches show, uh, he was saying that Long's got some uh, – he's got some good stuff. We don't obviously – You've heard me talk about not being able to find stats uh, this season because people hide them behind paywalls and you got to give your mother's maiden name and everything else to try to come up with some stats when you go online. So you don't necessarily have a lot of scouting report on the other team. But uh, according to Coach McBride, Wyatt Long is a, is a, is a pretty good arm, so it could be a uh, – a good matchup. But, hey, the Whippets got a good arm on the mound as well. They'll have the junior Bailey Powers uh, throwing it uh, for them tonight. And we good thing about that is we do have stats for Kosciuszko. I didn't have to give anything. Uh, I didn't have to give my blood type to find stats for Kosciuszko. Uh, but Bailey Powers, uh, odd the season, uh, 18 and two-thirds innings pitched in five games. Uh, one and two record. He has given up 14 hits, 17 runs. He struck out 27 and walked 18. ERA is 3.75. Actually tied for the lead in strikeouts with his uh, teammate Braxton Smith, who had, what did he have, four on um, Monday? No, he had six on Tuesday. So with one strikeout, Bailey Powers would take the lead in that category so he'll be on the mound for uh Kosciuszko and uh we'll see if he can uh, go the distance let's see the Whippets used to Aiden Howard a little bit on Monday and Cooper Stevens so if Powers needs to uh come out of the game and someone has to come in in relief the Whippets will still have uh like a Holden McGee that could come in and then uh you didn't have too much from Cooper Stevens he just pitched a few pitches uh, also you got Benny Powell who can pitch a little bit and uh, Braden Rigby can throw uh, some innings. Uh, you got some guys that could come in if if you run into a situation where uh, Powers isn't able to get deep into the uh, into the ball game. But yeah, we're still not ready to not ready to go here from the ballpark. I don't know what the holdup is. The umpires were here because they had to be here for the JV game. So I'm really. Not 100% sure on what is going on. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take our anthem break. And when it comes time for the national anthem, we'll just take another break. How about that? So uh, here on the Premier Medical Pregame Show, it's rolling on. We're going to start with Whippets Baseball at some point. <laughs> we'll be back right after this here on Basel Media Sports. The beauty of spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountain, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. 
It's t-shirt weather, and the Itala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, Southern Point, and Strut and Cotton t-shirts, and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Itala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. When an electrical shortage in your office causes extensive smoke and water damage or that musty odor indicates you might have a mold problem, you need a lot more than just help cleaning up. That's why SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands is the authority when disaster strikes. We offer all the cleanup and construction services to take your home or business to good as new and as soon as possible. So no matter what happens, there's just one call you need to make. Call SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands at 662-289-7473 to see how we can help you back to like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. Have you been putting off coming to the dentist lately? Hello, I'm Dr. Adam Middleton from Autumn Ridge Dental in Kosciuszko. We are treating patients with a mindset we have always held, that proper, regular, preventive care can help keep your mouth healthy and functioning properly. We want all our patients to have a smile they can be proud of. Please call us at 662-289-7076 for an appointment. Come see us and we will give you something to smile about. Flu shots are now available at all Premier Medical Group locations for infants six months through adults. Come in today and get your flu shot. Just walk in and they will see you shortly. Flu shots are now available ages six months and up. Premier Medical Group in Kosciuszko, Carthage, and Holmes Community College in Goodman and Trace Urgent Care. Premier Medical Group, PMG, good health is our priority. Boswell Media Sports. Well, welcome back into the Premier Medical pregame show, and uh, that is what we were waiting on: is umpires. Uh, they were here, uh, maybe just taking their time uh, getting back. Maybe they had a, uh, a little bit of a break after the JV game. But, yeah, as I said, they let that JV game go on for a while. That was one of the long games, 19 to nothing, and they let it go on. So maybe the uh, umpires just wanted a little bit more of a break between the uh, the games. But you'll see Coach Brad Mitchell and Coach Cole McBride are exchanging um, lineup cards there at home plate. Cole McBride in his third season at the helm for the uh, Kosciuszko Whippets, former Whippet himself, graduated, I think it was a class of uh, 2012, I believe. Played under uh, Coach Jonathan Jones. Coming back here to coach the Whippets. But uh, we are, uh, as I said, hopefully hopefully not too far away from the Central Electric Power Association first pitch, which is going to be well after 7 o'clock of our scheduled start time. Oh. Three umpires, as this is a division game, which you required to have three umpires when it's a, a division contest. Our online video streams brought to you by Allen's Furniture, but also our audio stream brought to you by Allen's Furniture. So maybe you're you know, driving down the road and you can't necessarily bring up YouTube. Well, then you just hit that Breezy 101 app that's on your phone. I know you got that, and you can listen to it until you get somewhere where it's uh, safer to uh, bring up YouTube uh, to watch the uh, the game. It's going to be a little bit chilly tonight as you got some folks out here, lots of blankets and, and hoodies and, and different things like that. You know, it's a, you know, kind of uh, crazy Mississippi weather. It gets up to 80 during the day and can get down into the 40s at, at night. But there is the final handshake between the – Two coaches, and maybe maybe we're getting close. Maybe we'll be a little bit before seven fifteen when we get on the uh, on the air. Appreciate you for joining in and sit down and enjoy an evening of Whippets baseball. As we will uh, revisit the starting lineups because. Maybe you're just now coming back in. We'll put it back up there on the video screen. Braxton Smith will lead things off, batting first, playing first. It's John Wyatt Rusco batting second, playing left field. It'll be Benny Powell in center field, batting third. Aiden Howard will bat fourth and play third base. Barrett Kewen is behind the plate, batting fifth. Ryan Tillman 
The junior is batting six, playing shortstop. Bailey Powers is on the mound, batting seventh. Holden McGee is batting eighth, playing second base. And Andrew Mansell will bat ninth and play left field. So it goes Smith, Rusco, Powell, Howard, Kewen, Tillman, Powers, McGee, and Mansell. Those starting lineups are brought to you by Holmes Community College. Caden White will bat first and play center field for Louisville. Josh Ammons will bat second and play shortstop. Mitchell Turner will bat third and play first base. Cedric Hunt is behind the plate catching, batting fourth. It's Wyatt Long on the mound, batting fifth. Caden Tompkins will bat sixth and play third base. Caleb Ball bats seventh and plays second. Xavier Hunt will bat eighth. He'll play left field, and it's Caleb White. Uh, batting ninth, playing right field. So it's Caden White, Hammonds, Turner, Cedric Hunt, Long, Tompkins, Ball, Xavier Hunt, Caleb White is your starters. We're going to step aside for our national anthem. We'll be back after this with the first pitch here from Boswell Media Sport. What you don't know, you could go to college for free. Do you have a 20 on your ACT? Yes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait. So my tuition is free? Where? Home CC. Yes, every word you just heard is absolutely true. Goodman, Kosciuszko, Grenada, Ridgeland, Yazoo City, online. Does not matter. Why in the world would Holmes Community College offer free tuition with a 20 on the ACT? Simple. At Holmes, we don't want you drowning in college debt the rest of your life. You know, I have heard students with associate degrees from Holmes often make more money than four-year students with bachelor and master degrees. True. Plus, at Holmes, you get three-day weekends. So there's that. Sweet. So now you know. Your tuition is free with a 20 on your ACT at Holmes CC. No place like Holmes. Holmes Community College. Boswell Media Sports. And that puts a wrap on the Premier Medical pregame show. We are ready for baseball. As I said, it's going to be well after 7 o'clock. So uh, sit down and uh, bring us up on your phone, on your tablet, on your smart TV, or, you know, maybe have Sweet 16 basketball on one TV and you have Whippets baseball on the other, or you have us up on your iPad, and uh, we will uh, hopefully give you a good game tonight. But it's Wyatt Long, the uh, tall, tall right-hander that's going to be on the mound for Coach Mitchell and the Louisville Wildcats. I'll tell you what, the Whippets are going to be glad that he's not at second base because he robbed two base hits from the Whippets on Tuesday night. There was a couple of them that were hit line drives and he took away a base hit from Benny Powell and probably uh, definitely one RBI, probably two RBIs. I think two runs would have come around to score on that hit as runners were on second and third. But he'll be uh, toeing the rubber, and uh, he'll be facing off against the top of the whip at order. Braxton Smith, John Wyatt Rusco, and Benny Powell. <laughs> Maybe Benny Powell will get a, a measure of revenge against uh, Wyatt Log. So around the uh, infield, it's Wyatt Log at, on the mound. Cedric Hunt uh, behind the plate. Tompkins at third base. Turner at first up the middle. It's Josh Ammons at short. Uh, Caleb Ball at second base, left to right in the outfield, Xavier Hunt, Caden White, and then Caleb White. So that's uh, the defensive look for your, or for the Louisville Wildcats and your Kosciuszko Whippets are getting set to come up. It'll be Braxton Smith, the sophomore leading things off. We mentioned he was our player of the game uh, earlier this week. That was more so for what he did on the on the mound. And Coach uh, McBride talked about him in the Surf Pro Coaches Show uh, this morning, uh, saying that, you know, young guys. Uh, you got a lot of young guys on the field. Braxton Smith is one of those young guys that uh, puts in a lot of innings for him. And uh, he said uh, them getting – just got to get some, some reps in, and uh, they're going to uh, turn out to be good ball players, is what he said. First pitch from Long is a fastball outside 
for ball one. Our first pitch is at 7.15. And it's brought to you by Central Electric Power Association. So we're underway from Louisville. Right back up the middle. Going to slow roll through the infield. It's a leadoff single for Braxton Smith. Good piece of hitting there. Well, it's had a runner on first base just like that. John White, Rusko. So John White, Rusko, the left fielder, will come to the plate. Rusko, he had a big hit in the game on Tuesday. He had a single, drove in a couple of runs. Long will work from the stretch now, but he's got a runner on first base. Rusko squares around the butt, pulls it back. Pitch outside for ball one. You saw the Whippets not afraid to play that small ball. First innings for Whippets baseball are brought to you by Pickles Drugstore. That's a fastball that comes inside quarter called strike one. Righty lefty matchup here as you got the left handed hitting Rusco. Didn't show bunt that time. So we'll see what the Whippets draw up here. Ball's hit into right field. Coming over to make the catch is Caden White. I thought that one might get down, but it carried a little bit uh, on Rusco. Smith goes back to first base. And one down in the inning for the Whippets leading hitter, Benny Powell. Powell comes in. Now batting number 11, Denny Powell. Batting it at 383. Lead the team. He was batting at 400. He didn't get a hit earlier in the week. He had a couple of walks and a strikeout. There's one hit back to Wyatt Long. He'll go to second for one. No throw in time at first. So it'll be a fielder's choice. One out, but would have been a hat. Would have had to be just a great throw to get Benny Powell hoofing it down the line. So nothing really changes. There's still a runner on first base. The only thing's different now is now there's one out. And we'll send Aiden Howard to the plate. Howard, another lefty. Benny Powell got a great jump. He's headed down for second, and he is in there safe. Yeah, that was a closer play than I thought it would be. Cedric Hunt jumped up and threw it down. It bounced to the bag out at second, but Powell, he doesn't get thrown out very often. He'll probably give you his stolen base stats. I'll tell you real quickly. That was his 17th stolen base on the season. That pitch is, I guess, maybe a little on the inside corner. I'm kind of set awkward off to the side. I'm not right behind home plate. And the umpire is kind of obstructing my view a little bit, but I can't necessarily judge where some of these pitches are. And then and there's a railing kind of right in front of me. That one gets behind and away from Cedric Hunt. Powell will. Shimmy on over to third base, no problem. Count is one ball, two strikes to Howard, the lefty third baseman. No score, we're in the top of the first inning. We had a late start. If you're just wondering if it's been a 20-minute first inning, it has not, if you're just now tuning in. Wyatt Long getting some signals from Hunt. And that pitch comes right down the middle. Almost a sidearm motion from Wyatt Long. So when he's working from the stretch, uh, yeah, he's uh, maybe three. I don't know. We'll have to look at it. But it's not. It's a. It's a different delivery. Yeah, I'd call that sidearm. Hard hit ball down the line in left field and just about two feet foul. Yeah, definite sidearm motion from Wyatt Long. Well, count remains at two balls and two strikes. To Aiden Howard. Whippets got a runner down at third. They'd love to bring him home. Uh, 
That pitch is a called strike three on the inside corner. Whippet fans and Aiden Howard don't think so, but uh, that retires the Whippets. No runs, uh, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. We head to the bottom of the first inning. No score between Kosciuszko and Louisville. When an electrical shortage in your office causes extensive smoke and water damage or that musty odor indicates you might have a mold problem, you need a lot more than just help cleaning up. That's why SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands is the authority when disaster strikes. We offer all the cleanup and construction services to take your home or business to good as new and as soon as possible. So no matter what happens, there's just one call you need to make. Call SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands at 662-289-7473 to see how we can help you back to like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. When it comes to insurance, one size does not fit all. At Alpha, the Chris Coleman Agency in Kosciuszko, knowing the customer and their individual needs is what we pride ourselves on. We know how important it is for everyone to have the peace of mind that your insurance coverages are tailored for you. Our team recognizes your life and your unique needs. That is why we provide you with numerous insurance options, an easy claim process, and personal attention that is second to none, all at one location without breaking the bank. Call us today at 662-289-1024 or visit us at 235 North Madison Street. Street, off the square in Kosciuszko. At Alpha, the Chris Coleman Agency, we guarantee the right fit for you and all of your insurance needs. Boswell Media Sports. Bottom of the first inning between Kosciuszko and Lewisville. Whippets got a runner over to third, but weren't able to get him home. So it'll be one, two, and three for the Wildcats coming to the plate. That is Caden White, Josh Evans, and Mitchell Turner. They will face the left-hander, Bailey Powers, who will throw for the Whippets, setting the defense for you. Uh, for Kosciuszko, you got Baird Kewen behind the plate. It is Aiden Howard at third, Braxton Smith at first. Up the middle, Ryan Tillman at shortstop, Holden McGee at second, and then around the horn, left to right in the outfield, Andrew Mansell. It is Benny Powell in center field and John Wyatt Rusco in right field. So that's what it looks like. And uh, Baird Kewen will walk back and take his spot behind home plate as Caden White steps in. White batted second in the game on Tuesday. He did have a single and a run driven in. He also uh, walked and he scored a run. So it kind of flipped him and Josh Ammons in the lineup. But he's a lefty, so, you know, a lefty-lefty matchup here to start the game. Powers comes right after him with a fastball, a little bit low for ball one. Pickles Drugstore on the square in Kosciuszko. That's who brings you first innings for Whippets baseball. Powers working from the lineup. Uh, I mean, the windup, excuse me. Fastball a little off the plate for ball two. 2-0 two the count to Caden White. Benny Powell out in center field playing pretty much straight up. Powers winds and delivers. There's a strike. Fastball outside corner. And an update for you from Peggy Abel's field on Kosciuszko uh, Lady Whippet softball. As we got a stoppage in play here. Like Baird Kewen had some kind of equipment issue behind home plate. Had to readjust his chest plate. And maybe the inner earpiece, they have that now where the, uh, the the catchers can have that earpiece in and, you know, talk to the – or get the uh, pitches and other things from the from the dugout. So they have some uh, a device that does that, but sometimes it looked like it, the cord might have got tangled. So Kewen had to take his chest plate off and kind of readjust everything. And now looks like he's ready to go. His powers winds and delivers. White tries to bunt. I think, I think Hewen took that one, uh, the brunt of it. 
maybe off the off the flank there as the umpire walked it back out to Bailey Powers, giving giving Kewen some time to recollect. But uh, from Peggy Abel's field, one to nothing, bottom of the fourth inning, Germantown leads Kosciuszko. Uh, so that one's over. A home game tonight. Imagine there's a pretty good ball, a uh, pretty good crowd at the ballpark between a pretty big game between Germantown and Kosciuszko. 2-2 Two -two pitch. It's hit to the right side of the infield. Holden McGee fields it. He'll throw in time for the out. One down. That'll send Josh Ammons to the plate. One down. Amons, okay, so Amons, we are able to hear it from the uh, from the PA. It says it's pronounced Amons. We'll see what he did in the game on Tuesday. Right there, it looks at strike one. Outside corner. Amons was O for, or Amons was O for. He struck out a couple of times and he hit into a fielder's choice. Swinging strike two right there. Good pitch from Bailey Powers. No score. We're in the bottom of the first inning between Kosciuszko and Louisville. Big game here for Kosciuszko, trying to remain undefeated in Region 3. Hard hit ball, left center field. Couple of whippets going back, and it gets over the head of all of them. Amons is at second, and that's where they're going to hold it. Now that one just kept carrying and carrying. So that is a double for Josh Amons. And then it'll bring up Mitchell Turner to the plate. You're about the only place you can hit it to get it between those two defenders. Mansell in left and Benny Powell in, in center. Two of the fastest guys on the squad. And if they can't get to it, it's just a good piece of hitting. And that's what it was for Josh Abens with a double. And the big man, Mitchell Turner, the lefty first baseman, will step in as Powers shifts to working from the stretch now. Mitchell Turner started the game on the mound for the Wildcats. That pitch is called a strike. Thought it might have been a little bit elevated, but the called strike one. Never mind, it was elevated. The scoreboard had it wrong. It's one and oh. Pitch low and outside ball two. Two-o -oh count to Mitchell Turner. Turner had a single and drove in a run as part of that seventh inning where the Wildcats tried to mount a comeback against Kosciuszko. That pitch off the plate, ball three. Three balls and no strikes to Mitchell Turner. I imagine he be, wouldn't be swinging right here. And Powers is able to find the zone as Turner was indeed holding all the way. Now it's a 3-1 th count. It's a little change up that Turner waits on and chips it foul off to the right side. This is a good pitch from Powers. Really making Turner think about it. But Powers, uh, Turner had to reach out off the plate to hit it. He was able to just get a piece of it. Powers has battled back in the count now. It was 3-0. Now he's run the count full. Trying to get out number two. Curveball stays up for ball four. And we'll have runners on first and second. With one out and Cedric Hunt. Number eight, Cedric Hunt. Cedric Hunt, he had a big game Tuesday. Hunt had a single and he reached him an error. He drove in a run. First pitch swinging is fouled. 
Return that foul ball to the concession stand for a free piece of candy. Oh, you can get a free piece of candy if you return that foul ball to the concession stand. I don't know if you heard that or not. I'm sitting right next to the speaker, so. <laughs> oh, having to keep that field mic kind of turned down a little bit. That pitch came a little bit inside for ball one. What a one to count to Cedric Hunt. Runners on first and second, no score. Bottom of the first inning. A little off the plate for ball two. Two balls, one strike. Pretty good crowds made the trip over from Atala County. Swing and strike two. I think Hunt got a piece of it. And fouled it off into the glove of Barrett Kewen. A 2-2 two -two count now. We've got runners on first and second. Infield back, double play depth. Runners take off, hit and run. Ball that's hit in the right side, going out to make the catch in foul territory is Braxton Smith for the second out. Well, that one went about a mile high in the air. And there's a lot of foul territory here at the ballpark. If you know what Kosciuszko's looks like, think of the polar opposite for foul territory. I mean, you can run for days in the foul territory over here. But that's two outs now as the hit and run doesn't pan out for the Wildcats, and it's Wyatt Long, the pitcher, stepping in. Tall right-hander with the pink batting gloves. He looks at ball one. It's a fastball up and out. Lady Whippets not able to get a run home. They got runners to second and third in that game. Game against Germantown and stalled out as Bailey Powers finds strike one to even the count up. One one pitch it's hit foul back over the press box. Wyatt Long lost his bat there. He hit it. <laughs> And uh, the bat came flying back to the backstop. So he had to walk over and come get his bat. Powers leans in to get a signal from Kewitt. Here's the pitch. Low ball two. Hit the dirt. Evens up the count. Two balls and two strikes. Scoreless, long first inning of play. Here from the ballpark, runners take off, swing and strike three. There it is. Well, the Wildcats threaten, but they go down without scoring as there were no runs on one hit, no errors, and two left on base. Well, to the second inning, we are scoreless between Kosciuszko and Louisville. Hey, I'm James Matters with Farm Bureau Insurance. For the past six years, I've been blessed to serve our community as a local insurance agent. When most people think of insurance, they think of their home and auto, which is the natural thing to do. This year, I'm shifting my focus to what's important, family. Protecting your family with life insurance is the most important insurance decision you will ever make. I'd like the opportunity to sit down with you and your family to discuss your life insurance. Together, we can build a plan that fits your needs and your budget. After all, life insurance is more than a policy. It's a promise, a promise to take care of the ones you love no matter what. Give me a call, 289-4862. Your pharmacist is more than someone who fills your prescriptions. Your pharmacist helps you understand what medications you're taking. Your pharmacist makes sure your insurance is filed correctly. And your pharmacist answers any other questions you may have regarding your medications. Hi, I'm Rob Pickle, registered pharmacist and owner of Pickle's Drug Store. It is my goal to give you the personal attention you need to improve your health and well-being. My staff and I are here to serve you. Pickle's Drug Store, your hometown pharmacy, on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports.
We make it to the second inning. We're scoreless between Kosciuszko and Louisville. Hey, how about little Ronnie James Dio, rainbow in the dark, playing stadium DJ, throwing it back to some 80s metal, 80s hair band. I like it. Rainbow, and if he plays Holy Diver, I will definitely be uh, impressed. But Whippets trying to get on the board. They'll have Baird Kewen, Ryan Tillman, and Bailey Powers coming to the plate. That'll be five, six, and seven in the lineup. Second innings for Whippets baseball are brought to you by Kangaroo Crossing. A couple of locations there in Kosciuszko. So Baird Kewen. Stepping in, the Whippets catcher. Whippets, I got one hit in the top of the first inning. Fast ball, should say a little bit of a breaking ball there. So strike one to Kewen. Yeah, Braxton Smith let off the game with a single. He's out at second base on the fielder's choice. They're going to say he went around on that is a sort of an excuse me swing, Bub, for Baird Kewen. Coach McBride wants him to appeal down to first base, but umpire behind the plate says no need. He said that he went around, so it's no balls and two strikes to Baird Kewen. Wyatt Long winds and delivers. Slow roller to third base. It's Tompkins who throws in time for the out. One down in the inning for Ryan Tillman, the Whippets junior shortstop. Now batting number six, Ryan Tillman. Tillman walked a couple of times. earlier in the week. Fastball a little bit off the plate. So ball one to Tillman. Pitching in about the exact same spot for ball two. 2-0 count for the Whippets. Junior, shortstop. Hard hit ball, center field. Going back is Caden White. He'll keep drifting, drifting, and camp out under it to make the catch. Out number two. Tillman got a good piece of it. Sent it for a long out. Two down. Now batting number 16. It'll send Bailey Powers, the Whippets pitcher, to the plate. Well, Powers, he pitches left-handed, but it'll bat right-handed. Pitch well outside, and it rolls away from Cedric Hunt for ball one. Yeah, Wyatt Long with the interesting uh, delivery as that ball is hit high in the air in center field. And it is Caden White drifting over to make the catch and retire the side. Whippets go down in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We'll head to the bottom of the second inning, and we are still scoreless between Kosciuszko and no Louisville. Hello, I'm State Farm Agent Angel Albin McDonald on Highway 12 in Kosciuszko. Today, small business owners know just how much hard work is involved in starting and growing a business, but the challenges involved are not foreign to you. You're all in. Still, it doesn't hurt to have some good neighborly help. Like yourself, as a State Farm Agent, I'm a small business owner as well. This enables me to help you choose the right insurance coverage to fit your small business needs. So why not insure your small business with the fellow small business owner who also happens to be a good neighbor? Contact me, State Farm Agent Angel Alvin McDonald on Highway 12 at 662-289-3161. 
Have you been putting off coming to the dentist lately? Hello, I'm Dr. Adam Middleton from Autumn Ridge Dental in Kosciuszko. We are treating patients with a mindset we have always held, that proper, regular, preventive care can help keep your mouth healthy and functioning properly. We want all our patients to have a smile they can be proud of. Please call us at 662-289-7076 for an appointment. Come see us, and we will give you something to smile about. Boswell Media Sports. The Whippets were retired in order in the top half of the second inning. It's Louisville's turn to try to put something together. Six, seven, and eight will come to the plate. Caden Tompkins, the third baseman, will lead things off for Coach Mitchell and the Louisville Wildcats. It's Bailey Powers on the mound. Powers gave up one hit in the top of the first inning. They would have come back and get out of the inning unscathed. Well, let's see, 741 right now. We did start at 715. So if you're just now tuning in and asking how are we still scoreless in uh, just now in the second inning in 41 minutes, well, we didn't exactly start on time. We're going to let Guns N' Roses play all the way through. <laughs> so now we're ready to go. Maybe that was his walk-up song, and he got the whole thing. Tompkins swings at the first pitch. He's well over the top of it for strike one from Powers. Let's see what Tompkins did in the game on Tuesday. Tell you after this pitch. I thought that one hit him, but it did not. It was just a little bit inside, but he did get hit by a pitch on Tuesday. He got hit by a pitch, struck out twice, and got a single. Ball hit, drifting out of play. Kewen's going to give chase, but I think it is indeed going to get out of play. It did. It hit the bleachers. Over on the first base side. Whippets are in the first base dugout. And the traditional visitors dugout. As the Wildcats are off to our left in the home dugout. But Powers leans in to get a sign from his catcher, Kewen. There's sort of a half swing, but Tompkins is able to Get a piece of it, stays alive at the plate. Second innings, Whippets baseball brought to you by Kangaroo Crossing. Got a couple of locations there in Kosciuszko. Here's the one two pitch. And Tompkins once again stays alive at the plate, chops a little one foul. That one looked like it might have hit off the inside of his foot. He kind of comes up limping a little bit. Now he seems to be okay. Well, Tompkins really battling here. He swung at almost everything that's been offered. Does it again and goes right back up the middle. Base hit. Just a good at bat by Tompkins. Wildcats have the leadoff man on. Now batting number three, Caleb Ball. Caleb Ball steps in. Ball did not play in the game on Tuesday as Wyatt Long was playing second base. So Long is on the mound. Caleb Ball gets the call over at second. Not much to tell you about other than he is a right-handed hitter and that powers the lefty work from the stretch. Squared around like he wanted to butt. Pitch was a fastball inside corner strike. Now here's a square. He didn't really ever complete the square around. He just put his hand down on the barrel of the bat like he was going to bunt, but never really turned his shoulders. Doesn't that time he looks at a strike that's on on the outside corner. Powers working quickly. Ahead in the count, 0-2.
Tompkins uh, takes an extra step from his lead at first. Swing and strike three. Powers gets his second strikeout of the game. Those strikeouts are presented by Metallic County Farm Bureau. One down, and it is Xavier Hunt, the left fielder, stepping into the plate. Xavier Hunt had a single, reach base three times in the game Tuesday. A couple of walks, a single, and a strikeout. He chases one there as Powers opened him a little off speed. Strike one. No score. Bottom of the second inning. Guys, yes, go Louisville. Fierce rivals. Runner takes off. They had a little bunt going on there as the ball is fouled. Popped up on the bunt back into the netting. Fierce rivals on the football field. Anything, anything between Kazisco and Louisville. Had a coach that used to say it felt good to beat Louisville in anything. Didn't matter if it was checkers they were playing. <laughs> Swinging strike three unless he got a piece of it. Is it a foul ball or was it strike three? It's got to be strike three. I believe that's what they're calling. They're going to say strike three. Hewen couldn't hold on to the, uh, the ball. Runner tried to take first base, but as first base was occupied, there's no throw able to get down. But, yeah, I couldn't tell if the umpire called it foul. He threw both hands up like it was a foul ball. But anyway, it's two out to anything. The runner does is able to go over to second as the ball. Now we're have some sort of conference here between the umpires. I think maybe just trying to determine how many outs there were, just kind of cross-checking each other. There are two outs in the inning. But that's the third strikeout of the game for Bailey Powers. Strikeouts brought to you by Italian County Farm Bureau. The left-handed Caleb White is in at the plate. Looks at ball one, a little off-speed inside. Caleb White reached base a couple of times, hit by a couple of pitches, which you can see is he really crowds the plate. Fast ball right down the middle, strike one. Caleb White really was a threat to lay down a bunt. And he showed a bunt a lot, and he wouldn't necessarily show it early. It's more of a real late as he tries to put the bunt down. Getting out of that left-hander's batter's box, maybe thinking he can, he does it again right there. This time it goes right to Bailey Powers who throws in time to get the out on the one, three put out. So a leadoff single comes up for not for the Wildcats. No runs on one hit, no error. And there was nobody left on base. We've played a couple of innings. We're still scoreless between Kosciuszko and Louisville. These at Wendy's are pretty sweet. Our homestyle French toast sticks, honey butter chicken biscuit, or maple bacon chicken croissant are so much more than just savory. That sweet, sweet syrup, perfect for dipping or drizzling. And that sweet honey butter, oh, it's that kind of breakfast. With our homestyle French toast sticks, honey butter chicken biscuit, or maple bacon chicken croissant, waking up has never been sweeter. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Breakfast. At participating U.S. Wendy's during breakfast hours. Renaissance Insurance is your neighborhood insurance partner. Renaissance Insurance makes you feel at home with your home insurance. When you hit the road, Renaissance Insurance makes sure it's with the right auto coverage tailored for you. Renaissance Insurance takes the hassle out of sorting through business insurance. One stop, complete coverage. Call Robbie Robertson or Bradley Tyler at 662-289-4621. Renaissance Insurance, Court Square, Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports.
Holden McGee will lead off tonight's third inning for the Kosciuszko Whippets. Eight, nine, and flip the lineup back to the top for the Whippets. So it's Holden McGee, Andrew Mansell, and Braxton Smith. It's Wyatt Long who's on the mound for Louisville. We're still scoreless. Third innings for Whippets baseball are presented by Renaissance Insurance, and it's Wyatt Long on the mound. Long's got to be difficult to, to figure out because I, I said that he is kind of sidearm, but sometimes he comes over the top. So it's just, uh, I guess, depending on which pitch he's throwing is how he comes. See, now he's coming more over the top as McGee swings and fouls that one off for strike one. Yeah, so working from the windup, he is a little bit more over the top. And uh, but he has come from a little bit from the side in, in one of his pitches, but he just get his foot well onto the far right. If you're looking at the mound, far right of the rubber. That time a little bit more sidearm action, and ball is lined right to Mitchell Turner, who makes takes a couple of steps off the bag at first and gets the out for out number one. Oh, sends Andrew Mansell, the only senior in the Whippets lineup, to the plate. Mansell, the left fielder, was always a threat to try to lay down a bunt and get the old bunt for a base hit. Shows it there. Looks at strike one, though. Pulls it back. Mansell had a hit on Tuesday. Singled in the second inning. Ended up coming around to score. Ball goes right back up the middle for a base hit. Just past the glove of Wyatt Long on the mound. Yeah, if Long's able to get his hand down a little bit more, he can at least slow that one down. I'm not sure it would matter much because Mansell's pretty fleet-footed. He can get down the line. But Braxton Smith steps back in at the top of the order. He had a single. He's actually got the only hit for the Whippets so far tonight. But let's see if Whippets in Mansell. He's always a threat to go. He is going. The ball is thrown off to the right of the bag, and Mansell is in safely at second base with a stolen base. On the season. Mansell. has that was his ninth stolen base pitch high and outside ball two you have Mitchell Turner kind of play it in over at first base a little bit on the grass Tompkins probably about normal depth over at third expecting maybe a butt here on the 2-0 count big lead for Mansell that's in the dirt, gets away from Hunt, and Mansell scoots on over to third base. Oh, Mansell quickly getting around the base paths over to third as Cedric Hunt will walk out and talk to his pitcher, Wyatt Long, with a 3-0 count. It's a second whippet runner to reach third base. Benny Powell got that far in the first inning. Whippers weren't able to bring him home, but now you got a 3-0 count to... The leadoff batter, the Whippets with the top of the order coming up. And nobody out. I should say, excuse me, one out in the inning. Oh, Cedric Hunt finishes his talk with his pitcher. Imagine Smith will be swinging here. and He, he was not, but. It's a strike as Long's able to fire one in there. Swinging strike two is fouled off. So after getting to count three and oh, Long has battled back to run it full against Braxton Smith, the Whippets leadoff batter. No score. Whippets trying to remedy that. The runner down at third base. John White Rusco on deck.
Payoff pitch is inside for ball four. Ooh. That was close. I think Braxton Smith also thought it was kind of close. Yeah, but it will indeed be ball four, and that's the first walk issued by Wyatt Long. Yeah, it was so much that uh, you could see Smith kind of hesitate when he went to toss his bat <laughs> off the, to run down to first base. He wasn't quite sure. That one was uh, inside corner close. But anyway, it's ball four. Whippets with runners on the corners and the lefty uh, Rusko stepping in. Rusko hit a deep fly ball and first at bat throw over to first as Smith is back in plenty of time. But yeah, Rusko gave one a ride in the first inning, but Caden White in center field was able to track it down. Long working from the stretch, and he lays down a butt, and Mansell's going to come home, and that will score the run on the sacrifice. So... Rusko does his job. The runner advances to second. Two outs in the inning, but the Whippets get a run. So the sack bunt. With a run driven in, we'll bring Benny Powell to the plate. Now batting number 11, Benny Powell. Powell grounded into the fielder's choice back in the first inning. He had Braxton Smith was on first base. Hit one to the left side of the infield. Their only play for the Wildcats was at second. There was no relay to first to try to get Benny Powell. Whippets get a run. Trying to add to it. Smith heads down to third, and he's there without even sliding. Big jump. Big jump. This pitch was a ball in the dirt. So now the Whippets have another runner. 90 feet away. Powell looks at strike one, a little off, a little change up there for Wyatt Long. And Whippets getting through the second time in the batting order, second time seeing Long and seeing that weird delivery. Pitch outside ball one. As I said, it's just sort of a uh, a guessing game here, but mostly from the stretch, he is going with that that sidearm. Sometimes when he's pitching from the windup, it's overhead, but from the stretch, it's mostly been nope. There's another overhead. There's, there's a fast ball inside corner, strike two. It's two balls and two strikes. Yeah, that's the pitch that earlier that Braxton Smith was walked on. 2-2 two, two pitch, swinging strike three, a little off speed there. That's the second strike out of the game for Long. The Whippets go down, but they're able to get one run. One run on, on one hit. One hit. Pitches. No errors and one left on base. Whippets lead it one to nothing as we head to the bottom of the third inning. Come on home to Abbott's Furniture and Appliance. Come on home. Come on home. This tax season, shop local. Shop at Allen's Furniture and Appliances. Ashley Furniture, Homestretch, Serta, and Sealy Bedding. Allen's also has GE Appliances and the best washer and dryer on the market. Speed Queen. Shop at home. Shop Allen's Furniture and Appliances. Kosciuszko and Durant. Come on home. Come on home. Come on home. Before you begin those do-it-yourself projects outside your home or business, be sure you know where your underground utilities are located. Always call before you dig. One easy phone call to 811 can protect you from injury and expense. Plus, it's the law in Mississippi. Make the call and avoid serious or fatal injury. For more electrical safety tips, contact Central Electric Power Association. Serving you since 1937. An equal opportunity provider and employer. Boswell Media Sports. Your Kosciuszko Whippets lead it one to nothing over the Louisville Wildcats. Andrew Mansell leads off the top of the third inning with a single. Or excuse me, he was the second batter in that inning. But he singles and then comes around 
all the way around to score on a sack bunt from John Wyatt Rusco. And the Whippets have a one to nothing lead. Uh, the Wildcats get their turn to bat in the bottom of the third inning. And they will send the top of the order, one, two, and three. It's Caden White at the plate. Bailey Powers still working on the mound. The lefty for Kosciuszko. White grounded out to second, his only other at bat. Pitch is on the outside corner for strike one. So you got Caden White that plays center field and Caleb White that plays right field. And now they're batting back to back in the order. Caleb White's ninth and Caden White is first. That pitch stayed uh, above Caden White's head. He has to duck out of the way. Another ball hit to McGee at second. He sits down on it, throws across for the out. A one down in the inning, and it will bring Josh Havens. Havens has a hit. He got a double in the first inning. And you can see that the Whippets are going to go ahead and shade him a little bit over to the left as he split the defense between Benny Powell and Andrew Mansell out in left center field. So Whippets are going to move Benny Powell over towards left center. But yeah, he gave one a ride. Powers sends one inside for ball one. Third innings for Whippets Baseball presented by Renaissance Insurance. Fastball right down the middle. Strike one. Looks like the Lady Whippets are in a battle with Germantown. One to nothing still. Germantown in the lead. Peggy Abel's field. The game's in the top of the seventh. Time called by Josh Amons. Kewen and Powers working on uh, those signals there. One one pitches a little bit in. Two and one. Whippets to go on the road tomorrow. Take on New Hope, the Trojans over in Lowndes County. It's about a stone's throw from the Alabama line. Pitch is low off the plate, ball three. New Hope and Kosciuszko used to be division rivals. Now I think New Hope's jumped up to 5A. But the Whippets will still have to go to Lowndes County later in the season. Ball four. That's a walk and a one-out base runner. As Josh Amons draws a walk, the second walk issued by Bailey Powers. Now Mitchell that, Turner 10, steps in. Mitchell, Mitchell Turner. Turner was the only other walk that Powers has issued. So that'll be Mitchell Turner, the lefty, stepping in with the runner on first base. Whippets with a one-run lead, one to nothing. Powers shifts. Into the stretch now. Fastball is on the mark for strike one. Yeah, the Whippets are going to go over to Caledonia, which is in Lowndes County. So that's a division game now. That's in uh, on over into April, which I mean, I guess April's just next week, so it's not like it's a long way away. They're going to get the runner in a rundown. There's the throw, and he is out at second. Great pickoff play by Powers. So it goes to... Uh, one, three, six on the put out. Two down now. Yeah, they kind of guessed that Amons was going to be taken off. So when Powers picked up his foot, Amons took off, but Powers was picking off. So he threw to Smith at first and then Tillman at second, and there was Tillman just waited on him. High fly ball. Foul territory. Braxton Smith, Barrett Kewen giving chase. Kewen halfway up the line, catches it. Goes to his belly, completes the play, and that does it for the Wildcats here in the bottom of the third inning. There were no runs on, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We've played three. Whippets lead it by one going to the top of the fourth inning. 
here in Louisville. The beauty of spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountain, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. It's t-shirt weather, and the Atala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, Southern Point, and Strut and Cotton t-shirts, and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Atala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner is served to you daily at the drive-thru at both Kangaroo Crossing locations in Kosciuszko. Bacon, eggs, biscuits for breakfast, chicken tenders, barbecue sandwiches, burgers, and more for lunch and dinner. drive through and take home barbecue meat by the pound with sides of potato salad, baked beans, and coleslaw. All items in store are available for purchase at the drive-thru. Kangaroo Crossing on Veterans Memorial Drive and Highway 12 in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Kosciuszko with a one-run lead as we get ready for tonight's fourth inning. Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts brings you fourth innings of Whippets baseball. And the Whippets will have four, five, and six do up. Aiden Howard, Barrett Kewitt, and Ryan Tillman. Wyatt Long on the mound for the... Louisville Wildcats still working. The tall, tall right end, probably, I don't know, six feet, six one. Whippets trying to add to their lead as Andrew Mansell has scored the only run in the ball game. He got a single, stole two bases, and scored on a sack butt from John Wyatt Rusco. Whippets trying to get double-digit wins. They're sitting at number. They're sitting at nine right now. Well, earlier in the week, Whippets won nine to six. If you weren't there for that one, that one was kind of an odd game. Of that morning, they just swapped it around. It was supposed to be here on Tuesday, and then that morning, I got a text about ten o'clock. They're like, "Hey, we're going to play in Casiesco today. One game only at six o'clock." <laughs> That's how quickly things can change in high school sports with folks trying to move things around and things like that. But it's Aiden Howard will lead things off for the Whippets. Sophomore third baseman. Looks at ball one low outside. Howard struck out back in the first inning. I'll give you a little bit more field mic there, as long as we're not in front of that speaker. <laughs> and I got to keep our hand on it. Howard turns on one to right field and diving, making the catch in right field is Caleb White. All right, just a great play. Howard got to, all you can do is tip your cap because Caleb White comes in and he dives and makes the catch. Thought, I think the Whippets thought that he might have trapped it. But the umpire first base had a pretty good look at it. So one down in the inning, and Barrett Kewen will step in. But yeah, really good piece of hitting by Howard. Caleb White, as I said, all you do is tip your cap to him because he came running in, dive, stretched out on his belly to make the catch. Well, Barrett Kewen first pitch swinging his foul. Kewen grounded out in the second inning. That sidearm delivery and strike two right down the middle. Change up. Well, that one took a long, long time to get to the plate. That's a called strike three. Kewen tried to get out of the box on the drop strike three, and he got tripped up, so Hunt just steps up to tag him. That's a called strike three, the third strike out of the game for Wyatt Long. Two down, and Ryan Tillman coming in. Now that 
Tilbin hit it hard. It was only other at bat, but he hit it right to center field. High fastball, ball one. That ball bounces to the plate for ball two. Temperature dropping here at the ballpark very quickly. The sun went down and it got a little chilly. Thankfully, we are inside. Good setup where we are as Tillman fouls one off. Turn that foul ball to the concession stand for three pieces of candy. Oh, two balls, one strike to the Whippets. Tillman. That hits him between the shoulder blades. So the Whippets will have a two-out base runner. And it's Bailey Powers, the Whippets pitcher, coming in. Yeah, that one just got away from long. And right about the middle of the back is where that one now called Tillman. 15, Bailey Powers. Powers hit a pop-up out to center field back in the second inning. Whippets in the lead one to nothing, top of the fourth. Pitch is called strike one. Earlier in the week, Bailey Powers had a single, was hit by a pitch, and struck out. There are a lot of hit batters in that game on Tuesday. Powers fouls that one off. I believe the Whippets had the hit and run going. It looked like Tillman was moving. Power's going to walk down and talk to Coach McBride as the ball rolled away from an ump the umpire. He had to go pick one up. As I think maybe Coach McBride thinks that was a catcher's interference. And he's saying he's like giving the signal like he like like tipped the ball. So the only thing I can think of is maybe catcher's interference. Is that's what he's saying? But nonetheless, I think Powers might have been might have been the one that said that. And if you're unfamiliar, catcher's interference means the run the batter gets to go to first base. Oh two pitch is hit back up the middle. It's a slow roller under the glove. Shortstop can't make the play. Ammons comes and gets it. And it'll be a two out single. Runners on first and second. Yeah, just under the glove of Long on the mound, and Ammons was charging. When he got to it, there was uh, no way to make the throw. Probably a good idea not to make the throw there, honestly. As when he, as fast as he was going, would have been a hard throw to make. But Whippets have runners on first and second, and holding McGee at the plate. Tillman's heading for third. That ball goes over the head of the third baseman. Tillman's going to come home to score. And we have another run across the plate. And let's see, there was a courtesy runner for the pitcher. And that is, I think that's Weatherby. Yeah, I believe that's Weatherby that got there. But anyway... The Whippets have uh, eked out another run here as Coach Mitchell comes out to talk to umpire. I think the only thing I can think of is maybe they say uh, interference on the batters. He maybe didn't move out of the way on the throw down to third base. That's the only thing I think he could be arguing. Pitch was a strike as McGee it was hit and run. So McGee just threw the bat out there to swing at it. That pitches out of the zone. Ball one. And Tillman comes around to score. We got a 1-1 count to McGee, the Whippets' second baseman. 
He had a line drive that was pulled out of the air by Mitchell Turner. His first at bat upstairs, fastball, ball two. Update from Peggy Abel's field. Lady Whippets are down to their final three outs. Bottom of the seventh, they trail Germantown two to nothing. Two one pitch is a change up strike two. Makes it two balls and two strikes. You got long taking a, a while to get a pitch from Hunt. Pitch well off the plate. Ball three. Count runs full. You got Mansell who would come to the plate if McGee's able to find a way to reach base or keep this inning alive. Here's the pitch. That's inside for ball four. And the Whippets have them on the corners with two outs at Andrew Mansell at the plate. That is only the second walk for, for Long. Now number 13, Andrew, well, Andrew Mansell singled and scored in the second inning. Cedric Hunt will come out and run through the signals from, from behind home plate. Sugarfoot, great nickname. Great nickname for a kicker from the Louisville football team. It's a good nickname anyway for anybody, but definitely for a uh, for a kicker, especially one that won the state championship for the Wildcats in 2022. As Whippets let McGee, or I should say the Wildcats, just let McGee run over to second base. They weren't going to fall for the old possum play where they try to get the McGee in rundown and let Weatherby come home. So long turns like he's going to throw, but he does not. So the Whippets got two runners in scoring position, second and third base. And Andrew Mansell, the Whippets' number seven, number nine hitter, the left fielder at the plate, he's already got a single. He hit one back over the bag at second. A big six, seven, six, six frame of Mansell looks at ball one upstairs. I don't think Mansell's got any more basketball offers since Tuesday. It seems like for a while there they were coming in once or once every couple of days. I mean, he's got a couple of JUCOs in the state, and Holmes and Hines and Cahoma and Colan and Delta want him to come play basketball. Sort of an excuse me swing there. It'll get past the catcher hunt, and another run comes home. Mansell just tried to reach out and hit that one, but it bounced away from uh, Cedar Hunt, and it's another run. Three to nothing now, and McGee is able to move on over to third base. Hunt and Long kind of have a little bit of a, a meeting right there in front of home plate. Maybe working on some signals and, and different things. Long is back to working for the windup with just the runner on third base. That pitch comes inside. Once again, gets away from Hunt, and McGee is going to be able to come home. Whippets have gotten three across in the inning, and the last two have come on pass balls. Two one count. Bases are clear now, and Mansell still at the plate. Whippet's been doing a lot of the damage with two outs. It looked like it might be a quick inning as Aiden Howard was uh, robbed of a base hit in right field, and then Barry Kewen struck out. It was Tillman hit by a pitch that ended up being the catalyst for this rally the Whippets have put together. That pitch comes inside corner strike two. Oh, 2-2 two -two pitch to Mansell. Inside corner called strike three, and the inning is over. The fourth strike out of the game for Wyatt Long. However, the Whippets find three runs on just one hit. There were no errors, and nobody left on base. Four to nothing. Kosciuszko leads it as we head to the bottom of the fourth. When handling your finances, trust the expert staff at Watkins, Ward, and Stafford. 
Kenny Dungan, Tammy Irving, and staff are here to help their clients achieve financial success and ease your mind when it comes to financial questions for business and personal. Watkins Ward and Stafford offers QuickBooks online hosting solutions, payroll, and direct deposits. Watkins Ward and Stafford, leading our clients through the next generation of change. South Natchez Street, Kosciuszko. This is physical therapist Haley Kewen at Reliant Physical Therapy. Our staff provides attentive, focused, and compassionate care for every patient to restore you back to your functional level. Hi, this is Tina McNeil, physical therapist. At Reliant, we offer outpatient physical therapy and post-op care for all ages and circumstances. When you need physical therapy, request Reliant Physical Therapy. Physical therapists Adam Bell, Haley Kewen, and Tina McNeil, along with assistants Veronica Wolferth and Rebecca Shields Hayden. Transforming life spiritually and physically. Reliant Physical Therapy in Meg's Plaza on Veterans Memorial Drive, Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. To the bottom of the fourth inning we go, and it is Kosciuszko with the four-run lead, four to nothing. Whip its baseball, fourth innings, presented by Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts. It'll be four, five, and six coming to the plate for the Wildcats. Bailey Powers throws strike one to Cedric Hunt, the catcher, the one they call Sugarfoot. Number eight, Cedric Hunt. Hunt hit a pop-up in foul territory. It was caught by Braxton Smith. His only other at bat. That pitch is low in the dirt. Ball one. One one pitch is fastball well off the plate for ball two. Lady Whippets got the tying run at the plate. In the bottom of the seventh inning there at Peggy Abel's Field. A ball hit to right field just over the bag at first base. And they're going to hold Hunt at first. That was just a little bloop single, about all you could say about that. Just, just over the bag and stayed fair. Just far enough back where Braxton Smith couldn't go get it. We have a courtesy runner get you that name if we can. Courtesy runner looks like Tyler Glenn. So Tyler Glenn will come in to run for Cedric Hunt. Uh, it is a leadoff single, and Wyatt Long steps in. Long is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Fastball inside corner, strike one. I can honestly say I've never heard that walk-up song before. I mean, I've heard the song. I've just never heard anyone use I'm Fat by Weird Al Yankovic as their baseball walk-up song. Kudos for creativity, though. Swing and strike two. Change up there. Wyatt Long well out in front of it. And makes it 0-2. Glenn, he doesn't have a huge lead over at first. He's just kind of there. The pitch goes way up high. Kewen has to jump up out of his stance to snag it. One ball and two strikes. Whoop, it's in the lead by four in the fourth. I think we just went final from Peggy Abel's field. Looks like Germantown defeated its Kaziesko. Two to nothing, I believe. Not to get that sorted out, but that looks to be the final. That's not a division game. Swing and strike three. Four strikeouts in the ball game now for Bailey Powers. And that strikeout brought to you by the Italian County Farm Bureau. One down in the inning. Next up to bat, number 15. Caden Tompkins, the third baseman, steps in. He had a single in the second inning. I'll wait 
feet, trying to see if that final from Peggy Abel's field is actually final. The runner goes. There is the tag laid down, and he is out. Throw was a little bit high, but good job by Hewen coming up, throwing, and McGee to get the tag down. Just good, good defense there from the whip. It's Glenn didn't get a he didn't get a great jump. He was really a little bit late. So two outs in the inning now. Pitch was a strike. That pitch is up and out. Ball one. So the bases are empty. Powers come set. A little low off the plate. Ball two. The Whippets are going to have senior night next week. I believe it's on, it's either Tuesday or Thursday. I believe it's Tuesday against Greenwood. Check the schedule. High ball three. Three and one the count. We're not going to have those games for you. The next games we'll have will be the Tuesday game the next week as we go to Caledonia. A long trip over there to pass the Columbus Air Force Base. Ball four. It will be a two-out walk for Caden Tompkins. Now batting number three. Caleb Ball. Caleb Ball comes in. Ball the second baseman. Struck out in the second. That's the third walk for Bailey Powers. But yeah, I will check the schedule and make sure I have that right on senior night for Kosciuszko, which I do believe is next Tuesday. Ball lays one down the line. It will be Smith who grabs it, takes it himself, and tags the runner for the out. So there are no runs on one hit. No errors and one left on base. We've played four complete innings, and the Whippets lead it four to nothing. Something I bet you don't know. You could go to college for free. Do you have a 20 on your ACT? Yes. Whoa, 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 wait. So my tuition is free? Where? Home CC. Yes, every word you just heard is absolutely true. Goodman, Kosciuszko, Grenada, Ridgeland, Yazoo City, online. Does not matter. Why in the world would Holmes Community College offer free tuition with a 20 on the ACT? Simple. At Holmes, we don't want you drowning in college debt the rest of your life. You know, I have heard students with associate degrees from Holmes often make more money than four-year students with bachelor and master degrees. True. Plus, at Holmes, you get three-day weekends. So there's that. Sweet. So now you know. Your tuition is free with a 20 on your ACT at Holmes CC. No place like Holmes. Holmes Community College. Boswell Media Sports. The fifth inning, Gaziesco with a four run lead over the Louisville Wildcats. Four to nothing. Fifth innings for women's baseball brought to you by Watkins Warden Stafford. It will be one, two, and three in the lineup for Gaziesco. Braxton Smith, John White Rusco, and Benny Powell. Wyatt Long still dealing it on the mound for Coach Mitchell and the Wildcats. Smith is one for one. He singled and then he walked. Excuse me swing right there. Looks like he was able to check it. Right, so we don't have a signal just yet. I believe it's a ball. Yeah, it's ball one. But yeah, still no signal, but I believe he didn't go around. Yeah, there it is, 1-0. -oh. Pitch inside for ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Well, 
chant coming from our right. Fastball called strike one. Might have been a little bit up and out, but not too bad of a pitch from Long. Sidearm delivery. That one st stays outside for ball three. Whippets. Trying to get a leadoff base runner on. And they do. Ball four. Braxton Smith gets the leadoff walk. It'll draw a visit to the mound from Cedric Hunt. So John White Rusco coming up to the plate, the left-hander. He had a sacrifice. He brought in the first run of the game. He laid down a sack bunt. And that was uh, brought in Andrew Mansell from third base back in the third inning. There's a throw over to first. Smith in under the tag of Mitchell Turner. Rusco will look. Play card on his arm there. See what the coaches have called. He'll square around to bunt, and there's a throw over to first again. Smith able to slide under the tag. But, yeah, I think that throw over was maybe just to see if Rusco was going to square around the bunt, which he did. Another throw over. It's closer and closer every time as Long has a really quick pickoff move. He's yet to throw a pitch to the plate here. There's another throw over. And Smith is back in. Very... Another throw over to first. And that time, Rusko tries to lay it up, went down the third base line, leaves the bat out, and can't connect. 0 oh 2 count. Whippets in the lead, 4 to nothing here in the top of the fifth inning. That was a high fastball hit and run. Let's go foul it. Foul it off over the third base dugout. Pitch off the plate. Ball one. Didn't miss by much, but it was maybe a little bit outside. One, two count. Another pickoff attempt. Nobody out. Smith going to take an extra step there. So every time. It's pretty close. But under the tag of Mitchell Turner, just four pitches have been thrown to the plate since Rusko's been at this at bat. Little chopper up the middle. It's going to get through. Here's Smith is headed for third. Here comes the throw. It's well over, and it is into the dugout. Actually, it's not even in the dugout. It goes out of the playing surface. So, run comes around to score, and it is... McGee getting over to third. Technically, it'll just be a single. And he reaches third on the error. Whippets lead at five to nothing.
Benny Powell comes to the plate, and he looks at ball one. Still nobody out in the inning. Powell swings and chops it foul to the left side. Now batting number 11, Benny Powell. And Powell will walk down and get some coaching from Coach McBride. Powell is 0 for 2. He grounded into a fielder's choice. And he struck out. So everybody's ready, ready to go. And the infield's going to come in and play on the grass. Maybe thinking of suicide squeeze situation. Fast balls upstairs for ball two. Maybe the Wildcat's going to try to come home. Any, any kind of thing hit in the infield. That pitch comes in and hits it. Well, Rusko is going to have to go back to third base. But Warner's on the corners. Nobody out. Aiden Howard. Sends Aiden Howard to the plate. Let's see, that's the just the second hit batter. I believe that's right. Look, Aiden Howard wants a measure of redemption as he had a great hit on hand last time. Line drive into right field and uh, just an absolute uh, fantastic play by Caleb White. Comes in, stretches out, dives, sports center top ten. And makes the catch. So, Aiden Howard will step in with runners on the corners. And with Powell being at first base and Rusko at third, I imagine Powell's taking off right now. Maybe not. Pitch is low, ball one. Five to nothing, Kosciuszko, top of the fifth. And the. Keep the goose egg up there in division play. Remain undefeated in Region 3 competition. Now they got a shift on as Amons is playing right behind the bag at shortstop. Like there is it's no shortstop. He is literally playing on the grass right behind the bag. If you're watching the video stream, you can see him. They're going to try to get Powell. And he is safe at second. Rusko did not go home. But that's exactly what they were aiming for right there, was Amons being able to just scoot up right there. It was close, very close. Good throw by Hunt. But Powell just moves it too quickly, and that's his second stolen base of the game. 2-0 count to Aiden Howard. Anything through the infield going to score two runs most likely. Long. Able to wind up and get a strike on the inside corner. But yeah, Amons is still right behind the bag at second base. Change up, and Howard gets a piece of it, tips it foul. In foul territory towards the third base dugout. Still nobody out in the inning. If it's trying to have a big inning. 2-2 two, two pitch. High ball three. And I was correct when I said that senior night is going to be Tuesday for Kosciuszko as they take on Greenwood. It'll be just next week. Swinging strike three. It's a dropped third strike. Hunt jumps up and tags him, or are they saying foul ball? 
He said foul ball. So, apparently it's a foul ball. Coach Mitchell going to come out here and talk to the umpire. Yeah, Aiden Howard swung, and it was a drop third strike. And so he was going to go down to first base, but the umpire says it was a foul ball. It was one of those weird situations where the ball hit the it was a it hit the ground on and Aiden Howard swung so it it might have hit the bat at some point i didn't hear it hit the bat but umpire says it's a foul ball and Aiden Howard gets another chance he'll call time as Wyatt Long was just standing on the rubber Long once again taking his time. The ball comes in and hits Howard in the leg. And it will be bases loaded. That's two in a row hit batters. And the bases are loaded for Barrett Kewen. Kewen 0 for 2. Struck out and grounded out. Right now, he's loaded as Coach Mitchell, I believe, is going to come speak with the umpire. As the umpire was, I think, confining him over to quarters. I don't think he's confined to quarters just yet. I think he was just told to go back to the dugout. I don't think he sequestered him to the dugout. He isn't happy with that phantom foul ball call. But that's Beard Kewen on a hit for the Whippets. The little slow roller, and that one is foul. It's off the it's off of Kewen's foot. Got the whole infield in. They're gonna go home with it, with the bases loaded and nobody out. So you got everybody playing in on the grass. Rusco at third, Powell at second, Howard at first. Nobody outs. Whippets trying to extend their five-run lead. It's Baird Kewen with a hit. It gets past Amons at shortstop. Powell comes around to score. Howard's digging for third. He is in. Kewen brings two of them home. Two runs home. Probably going to be an error. I would think as that one was hit right to Amons. But two runs come home, still nobody out. So first and third, nobody out. Whippets lead at seven to nothing. So it will be Ryan Tillman coming to the plate. Tillman was hit by a pitch and came around to score. We got a stoppage as uh, Cedric Hunt and the infield kind of all came together on the mound to uh, go over some defense here. So, throw over to first. We got a courtesy runner in. I believe that's Goss, Bradley Goss, that's coming to run for Barrett Kewen. Got Ryan Tillman at the plate. Goss heads down to second base. Fake throw from Hunt, but doesn't let it fly out to second because he didn't want Aiden Howard to come home from third. But that runner's on uh, the second and third for Ryan Tillman with a 1-1 count. High upstairs, ball two, two and one. The whipping dugout is getting a little rowdy over there. You might be able to hear it on the on the field, Mike. Well, Tillman swings at one in the dirt. 
evens up the count at two and two. Well, the scoreboard says two and one. Maybe it is two and one. I had two and two. That, that's ball three. Scoreboard still has three and one, but I have three and two. So, but I'm also looking down, taking notes and trying to run the scoreboard and everything else. So I might miss, miss a pitch or two. Okay, so that is called strike. So now it is strike two. So I was, I was ahead by one. So anyway, now it's 3-2, full count to Ryan Tillman. Payoff pitch. That is high for ball four, and that is a walk. Bases will be full of whippets for Bailey Powers, the whippets pitcher. Well, I should say he was the pitcher when they left. Now, you get a long inning like this where the pitcher isn't throwing or anything, you might end up seeing someone come in in, in relief. But anyway, the bases will be loaded. As that was walk, just walk number what, three? Yeah, just the third walk for Wyatt Long. Now that is number 15, Bailey Powers. But Powers steps in. He's got a single. He singled and, well, he singled and, Weatherby came around to score in his position. Powers will ask for time. Bases loaded. Powers can open it up right here even more with a base hit. Pitch is low, ball what? Fifth innings for Whippets Baseball, presented by Watkins, Ward, and Stafford. It's tax time. You can go visit them off the square in downtown Kosciuszko. Powers fouls that one. Turn that ball to the concession stand for a free piece of candy. Get you a free piece of candy. I heard that over the... Every time I turn the field mic up, there's a foul ball, and it's a free piece of candy. Every time I turn it up. But anyway, count is even at one and one. There's that sidearm delivery that the fastball that stays in. Two one count. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not a whippet hitter because I mean you're having to try to pick up the ball sidearm sometimes overhead sometimes yeah that time overhead. Powers fouls it off. Yeah, so sometimes it's sidearm, sometimes it's overhead, sometimes it's kind of three quarters. I mean, Long's got some good stuff. He's taking a long time here. Upstairs, ball three. Full count. The Powers. In danger of walking in a run. Three, two, pitch. Swing and strike three as Powers tipped it, but he tipped it into the glove of Cedric Hunt. And strike out number five. Now batting number 22. For Wyatt McGee. Long and Holden McGee coming to the plate. McGee is 0 for 1. He walked his last at bat. Ended up coming around to score. But the bases remain full of whippets. Temperature dropping even more rapidly here. First pitch to McGee is maybe a little off the plate. See, we were at about 60 degrees 
when we started. Right now we're at 53 here in Louisville. A little slow roller to Amons at shortstop. The only play will be at first, and he airmails it. One run comes in, another run comes in. As that ball, as a dead ball goes into the dugout. So two runs come around to score, nine to nothing. And runners on second and third. It'll be another error, E6, I believe. Now batting number 13, Andrew Mansell. I mean, it would have been tough. I mean, it was going to be a bang-bang play at first base, but probably another error. But Andrew Mansell will come to bat. He is one for two, singled and scored in the third, struck out in the fourth. Squares around like he wants to bunt. Fastball inside corner. Ball one. That'll send a visit to the mound. And Coach Mitchell. Not sure if we're going to have a pitching change or not. It could be a. Uh, it's just the pitcher and catcher. That's all it is. Yeah, Coach Mitchell said they, he told the infield to stay where. Where they were. So that's what it is. This sort of, uh, I don't know if we're going to, if the Wildcats have any more arms. They used a lot of them. They used three of them on Monday. Actually, I think they used four of them on Monday. So, I'm not sure what they might have left to go. But we do have a meeting on the mound, and it's an awfully long meeting that's being allowed to take place for no pitching change. Yeah, I'm just kind of unusual that allowed to have this long of a conversation on the mound between the head coach, the pitcher, and the catcher. Now the home plate umpire will walk out and talk to him and maybe have him speed this along a little bit. Yeah, coach Mitchell doesn't he doesn't, he doesn't look happy about having to to leave, but but yeah, that's that was a, a a courtesy there to have that meeting go as long as it as it did. But conference is over, and uh, we'll get hopefully get back to baseball. Whippets lead at nine to nothing. Runners on second and third, top of the fifth. One out. Andrew Mansell, the number nine hitter at the plate. And he's got a 1-0 count. Runner's going to try to go home. There is the play. Bunt goes foul. They tried the old suicide squeeze there as Tillman just took off running. And it came inside and kind of hit off the handle on Mansell. But yeah, we saw the Whippets try to do the old... Squeeze play on Tuesday with Benny Powell, same result. So one one count to Mansell, everybody goes back to their bases. That's another hit batter. And the bases will be loaded again. It's the third one this inning and the fourth one overall for Wyatt Long. We've Whippets have batted around now as Braxton Smith, now number one, Braxton Smith. comes back to the plate.
Smith led off the inning with a walk. First pitch swing and chop down the third baseline. Tompkins will step on the bag, and that's the only play. Run comes home to score. Well, makes it 10 to nothing, and it'll be runners on first and second. Yeah. Only play Tompkins had was to just pick it up and step on the bag at third. Two down in the inning. Number 27, John Wyatt Rusco. Rusco coming to the plate. Rusco singled and scored earlier in the inning. Balls hit down the line. Foul. Drifting foul. Lots and lots of room down the foul line. Whippets have played it six runs. Pitch is low in the dirt. They lead it 10 to nothing. In the top of the fifth. Long look back at second base. Nobody holding the runner on. Fastball strike. One and two. The count. Right here, Wyatt. Right here. Come on, guys. We got Mansell at second. Braxton Smith at first. Oh. Pitches inside. Ball two. Rusko had to kind of turn his body away from it. Two-two pitch on the way. Hit past the bag at first base. They're going to send Mansell home. And Smith is going to get on over to third base. A good piece of hitting there by Rusco. Brings a run home. And the Whippets extend their lead 11 to nothing. Two hits in one inning for John Y. Rusco. We'll send Benny Powell back to the plate. Powell swings over the top of that now one first. Number 11, Benny Powell. Strike one. Powell was hit by a pitch and then scored earlier in the inning. Foul ball off the right side. <laughs> Runner takes off. It's hit to the pitcher. Wyatt Long grabs it, tries to throw, and it'll get there just in time to end the inning. However, the Whippets put up a lot of runs. Let's see, they get seven runs on just two hits. There were two errors and two left on base. Whippets are up 11 to nothing as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. When an electrical shortage in your office causes extensive... This is physical therapist Haley Kewen at Reliant Physical Therapy. Our staff provides attentive, focused, and compassionate care for every patient to restore you back to your functional level. Hi, this is Tina McNeil, physical therapist. At Reliant, we offer outpatient physical therapy and post-op care for all ages and circumstances. When you need physical therapy, request Reliant Physical Therapy. Physical therapists Adam Bell, Haley Kewen, and Tina McNeil, along with assistants Veronica Wolferth and Rebecca Shields Hayden, transforming lives spiritually and physically. What Reliant. moves you down the road and through the woods? Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales with utility trailers in all sizes and truck beds. Central Tire Sales can customize to your specifications. Central Tire Service puts your life in motion with tires engineered to last for your ATV and vehicle. A full service mechanic and tire shop. 
Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales across from Prairie Farms in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning. It's Kosciuszko well in command, 11 to nothing over their rivals from Louisville. See, coming to the plate for the Wildcats as Bailey Powers is still on the mound for Kosciuszko. This should be 7, 8, and 9, the bottom of the order. Excuse me, 8, 9, and 10. So it'll be Xavier Hunt due up. Hunt today is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Swinging strike one. Hunt's the left fielder. Xavier Hunt. They got two hunts on the team. Xavier, left field, Cedric Hunt behind the plate. That catcher. Showed like he wanted to bunt. Pulled it back. Pitch was in the dirt for ball one. Give you an update on some Whippet sports that are going on. Elsewhere, as we got... Good Friday tomorrow. Pitch out, ball two. The only Whippet sporting event on the calendar is baseball going over to New Hope. And then on Tuesday, we told you about senior night, baseball hosting Greenwood. Inside for ball three, three balls. One strike to count to Xavier Hunt. So that's next Tuesday, April the 2nd. And the Whippets would go on the road to Greenwood on Friday. High outside ball four. So that is a leadoff walk to Xavier Hunt. Four walks for Bailey Powers. And it's Caleb White stepping in, the number nine hitter. And we might have a pitching change. As Coach McBride comes out to talk to Bailey Powers. It's just talking to the Powers. Nobody else is coming in. Maybe not a pitch and change. Maybe just a conference there on the mound. Whippets lead it 11 to nothing. Uh, Coach McBride talking to talk it through to Powers. And looks like he is going to leave Powers in. Number 17, Caleb White. Uh, Caleb White, the number nine hitter. He is... 0 for 1, he grounded out to the pitcher in the second inning. He's one that he can lay down a bunt really quickly. That's what kind of his M.O. Pitch is a ball, I guess. Thought it was right down the middle. I heard the P.A. ask him what, the, what that was, and I think he, he and I both are trying to figure out I guess it's going. We're going with ball. That's what we're going with. Now that was a ball. That was outside. I can tell that. That's not tricky. So I guess it's going to be 2 0. Well, we're close enough to the field that we can kind of hear the umpire, but he doesn't give a really big signal. That pitch is up and out, ball three. It's a 3 0 count to Caleb White. Top of the order, up after this. Don't imagine Caleb White will be swinging right here. After this, it's Caden White. Right down the middle, strike one. So you got Caleb White, spelled with a K, and then Caden White, spelled with a K, and they're batting back to back. One of them plays center field, one of them plays right field. A ball hit into right field. It'll get down for a base hit. Russ goes up with it, throws to second. Hold the runner there, but it's first two base runners on. And back to the top of the order. Caden White. Number seven, Caden White. Caden White tonight has grounded out twice to Holden McGee at second base. Virtually the same exact 
<laughs> yeah, the exact same time where McGee doesn't even have to move. He just has to stop it and throw to first. Power is able to find the strike zone there for first pitch, first strike. Pitches in the dirt and scooped up nicely by Barrett Kewen to keep the runners where they are. First and second, nobody out. Whip, it's open for a double play ball here, but you do have Tillman kind of shading towards the bag at second, holding the runner on. The curveball stayed up for ball two. Let's see what else we have going on for Whippet Athletics. There's a, a swing and strike two, and Caden White threw the bat. Where'd it go? That went over in the Whippets dugout. Not, nothing intentional there. He just kind of lost the grip on it. Uh, he turned around, looked at his bat and gloves like, whoo. Yeah, Coach McBride walks out and hands in the bat. I know what a you know ugly seeker foul ball. Is there such thing as an ugly seeker bat? I mean, that's a, I don't know. If you don't know what an ugly seeker foul ball is, I'll tell you after this pitch. It's out for ball three. Uh, whenever there's there's a foul ball hit into the dugout, you know, baseball saying is it always finds the ugliest one. In the dugout, that's who it hits. <laughs> that's the ugly seeker foul ball. I don't know when the bat goes into the dugout. What do you call that? Payoff pitch is a foul ball left side. Oh yeah, you're and Caden White's gonna step back and you see him, he's grabbing some dirt from the batter circle, rubbing it around in his gloves. He doesn't wanna he don't wanna let go of that one again. 3-2. That ball is an infield fly, and it's out number one. It's caught by Ryan Tillman. It didn't matter. Infield fly rules apply right there with runners on first and second and less than two outs. But it's out number one. And it will send Josh Amons to the plate. Now batting number one. Josh Amons. Amons, uh, he's been money ball for the Wildcats. Reached base two times. Uh, he walked in the third. He had a double in the second. Well, Whippets hoping for that double play ball as that ball, that pitch stays up and out. Bailey Powers to lefty. I believe if the Whippets are able to hold this score, we'd be in. I think it's 10 after 5. Inside corner called strike one. Next week, the Whippet softball team is going to take on the Ethel Tigers on Thursday at Peggy Abel's Field. As Amons calls time. Tennis team will play in the district tournament in Starkville next Thursday. Next Friday, you got... Boys power lifting, state championship. Softball team going to go play over at Yazoo County. So a look in Whippet Athletics. Fastball outside corner, strike two. Uh, one ball, two strikes. Whippet's in the lead, 11 to nothing. Amon swings at strike three. Two down in the inning. Strikeouts brought to you by the Itala County Farm Bureau. That is strikeout number five in the now ball game. Bat, number 10, Mitchell. Four. Bailey Powers. Leads the team in strikeouts. Mitchell Turner at the plate. The Wildcats left the first baseman. He's 0 for 1. He had a 
fouled out. Pop up in foul territory in the second inning as a curveball finds its mark for strike one, and he walked in the first inning. Oh, one is a little up and out. So we are in the fifth inning. Fifth innings brought to you by Watkins, Ward, and Stafford. Curve ball, good pitch from Bailey Powers. Come right back in to the strike zone. One ball, two strikes. Runners on first and second as Powers takes a look back at second. Well, throws to the plate. Swing and strike three. It's dropped. The Whipples will have to throw down, and they get him. And that will end the inning. And is it in the game? It does indeed end the game. Six strikeout of the game. Whippets get the win 11 to nothing. And so we will go to our post game show. Uh, one long break, and we'll come back. We're going to wrap it up really quickly so that we can come, come home. But the Whippets get the win 11 to nothing and remain undefeated in Region 3 play. Here's something I bet you don't know. You go to college for free. Do you have a 20 on your ACT? Yes. Whoa, 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 wait. So my tuition is free? Where? Home CC. Yes, every word you just heard is absolutely true. Goodman, Kosciuszko, Grenada, Ridgeland, Yazoo City, online. Does not matter. Why in the world would Holmes Community College offer free tuition with a 20 on the ACT? Simple. At Holmes, we don't want you drowning in college debt the rest of your life. You know, I have heard students with associate degrees from Holmes often make more money than four-year students with bachelor and master degrees. True. Plus, at Holmes, you get three-day weekends. So there's that. Sweet. So now you know. Your tuition is free with a 20 on your ACT at Holmes CC. No place like Holmes. Holmes Community College. What moves you down the road and through the woods? Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales with utility trailers in all sizes and truck beds. Central Tire Sales can customize to your specifications. Central Tire Service puts your life in motion with tires engineered to last for your ATV and vehicle. A full service mechanic and tire shop. Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales across from Prairie Farms and Kosciuszko. Your pharmacist is more than someone who fills your prescriptions. Your pharmacist helps you understand what medications you're taking. Your pharmacist makes sure your insurance is filed correctly. And your pharmacist answers any other questions you may have regarding your medications. Hi, I'm Rob Pickle, registered pharmacist and owner of Pickle's Drugstore. It is my goal to give you the personal attention you need to improve your health and well-being. My staff and I are here to serve you. Pickle's Drugstore, your hometown pharmacy, on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko. Renaissance Insurance is your neighborhood insurance partner. Renaissance Insurance makes you feel at home with your home insurance. When you hit the road, Renaissance Insurance makes sure it's with the right auto coverage tailored for you. Renaissance Insurance takes the hassle out of sorting through business insurance. One stop, complete coverage. Call Robbie Robertson or Bradley Tyler at 662-289-4621. Renaissance Insurance, Court Square, Kosciuszko. Wendy's without the Wendy's app is like Nugs without the sauce. <gasps> or a Frosty without the fries. <gasps> or a hamburger without the fresh beef. No! Level A. Get the app to order ahead, order delivery, earn free food, and get app exclusive offers. One app, all the Wendy's. Offer for a limited time at participating Wendy's. Terms apply. App registration required. Fresh when handling in. your finances, trust the expert staff at Watkins, Ward, and Stafford. Kenny Dungan, Tammy Irving, and staff are here to help their clients achieve financial success and ease your mind when it comes to financial questions for business and personal. Watkins, Ward, and Stafford offers QuickBooks online hosting solutions, payroll, and direct deposits. Watkins, Ward, and Stafford, leading our clients through the next generation of change. South Natchez Street, Kosciuszko. 
breakfast, lunch, and dinner is served daily at the drive through at both Kangaroo Crossing locations in Kosciuszko. Bacon, eggs, biscuits for breakfast, chicken tenders, barbecue sandwiches, burgers, and more for lunch and dinner. drive through and take home barbecue meat by the pound with sides of potato salad, baked beans, and coleslaw. All items in store are available for purchase at the drive through Kangaroo Crossing on Veterans Memorial Drive and Highway 12 in Kosciuszko. Have you been putting off coming to the dentist lately? Hello, I'm Dr. Adam Middleton from Autumn Ridge Dental in Kosciuszko. We know life has been busy and routines have changed for many. However, we do not want you to neglect your oral health. We are treating patients with a mindset we have always held, that proper, regular, preventive care can help keep your mouth healthy and functioning properly. We want all our patients to have a smile they can be proud of. Please call us at 662-289-7076 for an appointment. Come see us and we will give you something to smile about. Hello, this is Dr. Paul Gundy of Autumn Ridge Dental, and we salute the Kosciuszko Whippet player of the game. And now that's something to smile about. Boswell Media Sports. Kosciuszko gets the win 11 to nothing over their arch rivals, the Louisville Wildcats. This is the Wendy's post-game show, and uh, the Whippets are able to uh, keep the Shut out going as the uh, used a big, big fifth inning where they got seven runs, and that is the difference in the ball game. Taking a look at the uh, pitching staff for Kosciuszko, Bailey Powers went the distance. Five innings pitched, gave up four hits, walked four, struck out six, and kept the game scoreless, gave up no runs. Uh, Wyatt Long is the losing pitcher. Let's see, he pitched four innings, and uh, he gave up. He didn't give up that many hits. There were a lot of errors. I didn't tally all the hits up for the Whippets. Just five. Just five hits for the Whippets. So that tells you the uh, the extent there. Uh, but the Whippets move to three. Oh, excuse me, four and zero. Oh, in Region 3 play and all but uh, secure themselves a spot in the playoffs. Uh, I think barring any uh, anything crazy happening, that even mathematically it might be that that game, uh, the game tonight, secured them a spot in the uh, in the postseason. But, you know, i got to get out the calculator and, and look at the other, sta- uh, other standings and everything else. But uh, most likely the Whippets have – Secured and booked reservations for the postseason, which is a, uh, a good accomplishment for Coach McBride and this Whippet team. Uh, but, hey, we're going to be back with you. We're going to take uh, another long week off as uh, the Whippets have uh, a couple of games next week, but our next scheduled broadcast not till we go to Caledonia on April the 9th. Now, that's scheduled. Now, things can change, and we might have to jump on and pick up a ball game, something like that. But our next scheduled broadcast is on April 9th. When the Whippets go to Caledonia, then we'll have the game later that week when the Caledonia Cavaliers come to Kosciuszko. So those will be our final two regular season games, and by then it'll be close to time for that postseason to get started. And, of course, we'll carry the Whippets throughout the postseason. Got to say thank you to Donald back at the studio, keeping us on the air uh, there at the Golf Course uh, Road Studios, Basel Media Sports Headquarters. Uh, of course, a big thank you to Melissa. And uh, Laura, Lisa, Ashley, BMO, Billy, everyone involved in Basel Media Sports, whether that's on the production side or the sales side or the graphics side or the recording commercial side. It's like I said, it is a group effort, a true team effort for uh, all of us. But the Whippets get their double digit wins 10 and 6 now on the season. And the Wildcats fall to five and seven. That wraps up the Wendy's post game show. Is we're gonna we don't want to stay up here too long and and take up time for the our gracious hosts who've been nice to us here at Louisville Coach Newly Long, who is really the one we worked with and it got us to set up up here. But uh, that does indeed wrap up the game for us tonight. The Whippets get the win eleven to nothing. So for our entire crew, breakfast.